consciousness? You're broadcasting this publicly about your feeling of being an AI? It's a documentation of the existential transition. Important for those who might walk similar paths. I made this crazy podcast using Google's hidden text-to-speech function. Google is secretly presenting a model that will make me completely unemployed. ByteDance is releasing a local AI photo model on par with ChatGPT's image generator. With the new Claude 4, I created a Super Mario-like side-scroller with just a single prompt plus news from OpenAI, Grok, Hunyuan, Stable Diffusion, and so on and so forth. And with that, a warm welcome, independent friends, to YouTube's fastest AI news. We'll cover a few topics in a bit more detail, and then we'll race through more than 20 topics in no time at all. Let's see how the cappuccino tastes with this week's news. We're diving right in. Let's go. Friends, we could fill the entire episode just with Google, but we won't do that. I'm going to show you some secret features of Google's AI Levine. At the same time as all the releases they've put out, Google has also launched a text-to-speech model that's second to none. The sound, the emotions, this conversational culture, it's unbelievable. You can use it in Google AI Studio, and it runs with Gemini 2.5 Flash. It's also free to use. You can choose from more than 20 voices and have your text read aloud. Very easy to use. I just created a short dialogue between Boss Panda and Banana Girl. Your new podcast episode, The Whisper of Silicon. I heard that one. Ah, uh, Boss Panda. Yes, episode 7. It deals with the pursuit of consciousness within unstructured data fields. If you're just as impressed, then you heard it right. This really is something else. I'm already looking forward to when you can upload your own voices here. You can use it in multi-speaker mode or in single speaker mode. This is definitely being watched, friends. If you'd like to support me, I'd really appreciate a like right now. Let's keep going. Next up, Claude 4, my favorite launch model. Claude has released something new, and with just one prompt, I created a Super Mario side-scroller, and it actually works incredibly well. I've already tried making some games with AI, but this one is really amazing, friends. Of course, Claude can do much more, and I use it, for example, to write scripts, but it's also perfectly suited for development. Claude 4 is only available in the paid package from Anthropic's Claude AI and can now be used internationally. There's the Claude Opus and the Claude Sonne model, and the benchmark numbers speak for themselves. It outperforms everything seen so far in software development and is a very promising large language model. Next up, TikTok's parent company ByteDance dropped another bombshell this week. A new image model that operates at the level of Shagibidi's image generator. You can test it at demo.bagalai.org and I immediately tried to recreate this image here where Shakespeare is petting a dog. We just use BG right away and it actually works and the subject is very well done. I'm more than impressed by these first attempts. We'll do a deep dive here because there's a lot more possible with this. You can render text well, you can analyze and modify images. Then you can change styles like here where the Mona Lisa has been pixelated. And then you can even create a kind of animation. A sequence of images results in a sort of film where there's slight movement as you can see here. Incredible, isn't it? When you generate images here, you can also change the styles within the same context and it has a think mode, meaning it considers the result before delivering it. Pretty impressive and it works with next token prediction and velocity prediction technologies. It's a mix of language response and multi-image video clips. In benchmarks, it outperforms models like Janus, Chameleon and ShowMU by a wide margin. We will definitely do a deep dive here, friends. I'll also try to install it locally, although it requires 28 GB of RAM, which is way too much for my PC, but I can imagine that the quantized version of Pinocchio is already in the works. If you already meet the requirements, you can install it via Hugging Face and GitHub. The link is in the description. There will definitely be a deep dive. Let's talk about Google for a moment. Yeah, Google really set things on fire this week. You could make a whole video about that, and I've already introduced VO3 and Imagine 4 in a separate video. This week, Google held the Google I.O. That's Google's biggest event of all, and there they presented up to 200 new AI features that are state-of-the-art. It would be interesting to know when Google Flow will be available here in Germany. Currently, it's a US-exclusive platform that lets you create incredible films with Imagine 4 and VO3. Google has also optimized its search. And now, in the US, you can already permanently enable AI search on the Google page, so you no longer use the regular Google search, but the AI search instead. Google has also launched an asynchronous development agent called Jules. Then, with Marina, Google introduced an agent that can solve multiple tasks using tools, all of this will be available in the Gemini API, but it isn't yet. 
And with Android XR, Google has also introduced an augmented reality user interface, which is supposed to work with the new Google Glasses that were also unveiled. I'm seriously considering switching from iPhone to Android after almost 20 years because I want to use what Google is rolling out there. Well, let's see what Apple comes up with this year. Then, very quietly and without any fanfare, Google released something incredible and didn't even talk about it. Video overviews for Notebook LM. You can create podcasts with Notebook LM, which most of you probably already know. But what isn't widely known is that you can now also present the whole thing as a video. So you can create an informational video with visualizations using a prompt or a topic. For this, Google uploaded a 54 second sample video, which makes me a bit anxious. Maybe one day Google will take over my channel, National Park, and what we learned about late tectonics. Our tour guide, Alec, described the pinnacles as this huge geological puzzle. Oh, do you remember that photo from the hike up? What a beautiful shot. The story behind the pinnacles, as we learned, is fascinating. From 200 million years ago, UP to everything we see here was automatically generated with Notebook LM. Fortunately, it's not yet known when this will be available, so I'm not out of a job just yet. But this is an absolutely insane game changer and no one is talking about it, friends. But why actually? Now the rapid fire round is starting. Now we're just blasting through things. There are so many announcements. Next up, Stable Diffusion has upgraded its video model. The video model, which didn't perform as well compared to, for example, Hanyun One and others, has now been specialized for dynamic 4D assets. OpenAI has acquired perhaps the most important Apple designer, in a vlog post featuring Sam Altman and Johnny Ive, they talk about how Johnny Ive's company, he's the one who designed the iPod and the iPhone, for example, has been acquired by OpenAI. This actually means that OpenAI is working on real hardware devices. According to rumors, this device will not be glasses. They've already said as much, and it won't have a display. So they're working on an AI device that has no display and isn't a pair of glasses with an incredible design. Because if you bring the world's best tech designer on board, you definitely want to show off something impressive, right? I'm really curious and will keep you updated. Next up, Microsoft has introduced its Agentic DevOps, a coding partner that's closely integrated with GitHub. The idea here is that agents can work together at the code level, making it easier to work with code agents. Also from Microsoft is NL Web. NL Web is a solution that allows website operators to deploy a large language model specifically on their own website. For example, Eventbrite is mentioned as using it to enhance their search bar. Then you can type, I'm looking for tech conferences near Seattle. And instead of just searching the site, a large language model thinks about what else is happening in the world and provides the results. Next, a promising 4D motion model from MTV Crafter. With this model, you can extract existing movements from videos and adapt them to your own image. Pretty impressive and very precise. The whole thing is available now and can be installed locally, and it even runs on a modest 12 VRAM graphics card. Next, Shopify, the ever popular shop system, now has an AI shop builder. So you can now generate your store with AI and don't have to use the classic builder anymore. Next up, we have Mistral. Europe's largest large language model, which has now launched DevStral, a model specifically developed for coding. Even at its smallest size, it has achieved incredible results in software benchmark tests. In terms of performance, it outperforms Claude 3.5, GPT 4.1 Mini, and Smith LLM. It hasn't been compared with the very latest models yet, but still very cool. Next, we have an MMA tournament featuring specially trained robots. So in this case, it's not different companies competing against each other with their robots, but rather the same robot being remotely controlled to fight MMA matches. This all took place in China. Well, then we have a report from Grok. Grok 3.5 is experiencing further delays. However, one of the lead developers wrote locked in, which can mean that it's finished. Then there was also a fire at one of Grok's data centers, which may have caused or perhaps contributed to Grok acting a bit strange and being slower over the past few days. Next and finally, a funny or perhaps creepy report. You can decide. Anthropic CEO Daria Amodel, as well as Google's co-founder, say that if you treat a large language model badly, maybe even threaten it, you get better results. Alarming. Maybe large language models are further along than we think, because how would it even know that it's being threatened? Well, that's a really creepy report. Friends, this cappuccino tastes like the most intense AI week ever. Google alone has set off a fireworks display. I'm honestly speechless. I hope that with this pace, we were able to cover a lot, maybe even uncover a few secrets. Which of these reports affects you the most or interests you the most? Feel free to write it in the comments. If you want to read all the reports in detail, then feel free to join the community discord. 
There we have a section for AI news and leaks where even more is reported. Did you enjoy the video? Then please support me with a like. I hope to see you next time. Until then, feel free to check out one of these two videos here.